So, we're back. Uh, this is part 7, I want to say. I think part 7 of the DVD collection. Uh, but before we get into it quickly, I just want to make this little question, really. Um, I'm putting it on this video. Whether this is the right one, I'm not sure. But I'm assuming if you're watching this one, you're interested in my DVDs in my collection, obviously. And if you're of the Doctor Who side of my fan base, which is probably the good majority of you, I think this is what the address to. This might be the wrong way to do it round. Anyway, I've had an idea for us. Well, I had this idea a long time ago, and I kind of did it on this channel in the early days, back when I had a really squeaky voice and uh, pretended I watched stories when I hadn't. And, um, yeah, it's an idea which I kind of wanted to do again. A, because it means I will have, well, watched everything, oh, what I'm about to sort of say, and... It, it seems really enjoyable, uh, but I wonder whether you'd want to see it. So, my idea here is, I go through the DVDs of Doctor Who class series as they were released, and I watch everything on them. So, for example, I'd watch first the Five Doctors Special Edition, everything on that DVD. So, if there's production subtitles, I'll watch it with them, commentaries, all the extras, try and find every Easter egg. And in the video, I'll explain my thoughts on everything, and everything that maybe isn't advertised on the DVDs and stuff like that. And, Every bit of nugget on each DVD, so each DVD's got a video. Um, if that's something you want to see, like the video or say in the comments, either way. And I'll sort of go off that. I think if I get 10 or so people saying, yeah, I want to see that, then I think I'll go for it. Um, if you think maybe I should make a video on this just so, you know, I'll get people, the, the chance to happen, uh, then do say as well. Anyway, uh, enough blabbering about that. Let's move on to the DVDs. So we had finished off Russell Brand and my little rant about him. And now we'll move on to Harry Hill. Uh, I've had this for a long time in Hooves. I just never had the uh, I've just never had the sort of ambition to watch it. I'm not too sure why though, because I really like Harry Hill and I've liked him since I was a kid. I think I probably am gonna I'm gonna make a concerted effort for the like, rest half of this year to sort of watch the rest of my DVDs I've had for a long time and just never got around to watching. Uh, Sausage Time. I watched this one. This one was very funny, which is which the whole reason I brought in Hooves because I thought well Harry Hill is very funny. Uh, Stand up because it is just him. He is just bonkers. Um, yeah. Now we move on to recent DVDs. So I've not really watched any of these. So, but I'll go through what I've got. Uh, so we've got Kevin Bridges, a whole different story, live in 2015. Joe Pras Pascal. Uh, does he really talk like that? Uh, I've heard of the name before, and I've heard very funny next to it. So I saw this and I thought, well, let's give it a go. Rob Brydon live. I love him on um, uh, What I Like to You. I know he's in that Gavin and Stacey, whatever. I've not got into that or know much about it, but I built for 50p, why not? Uh, Greg Davis Live, I did watch this, and he is just hilarious. Definitely one of the uh, funnier, older comedians that we have in this country at the moment. Uh, very, very, very funny. Uh, Eddie Izzard, um, Dressed to Kill. This is one of his early DVDs, as you can tell, with the old 15 logo. Uh, yeah, very recent purchase, as you can tell, because CX had changed the logo. Uh, then we have Eddie Izzard, sexy. Uh, I've not, I have watched one of these Eddie Izzard, but I didn't finish it, and I didn't want to take the stickers off just in case it didn't work. Even though God knows where the receipts are to these, but it's just a thing. Is it you nice know, to know what I've watched? Oh, you yeah, know, I did actually. I must have finished it. Uh, stripped. I did find it quite funny. It, I don't know why I didn't really watch the other one. That, that's new, so that's why that's not been watched. I don't know why. Just kind of get that you forget about them really, especially because the down here it's like. You know, I'm looking more on that shelf than I'm looking for stand-up. Anyway, here we have, well, that's what it says on the tin. It's all the Only Fools and Horses, and I've not even begun to delve into it. Um, because I've been busy watching other series. But when I do, I will give my thoughts on it. But what I've seen on stuff like UK Gold, I found very funny. So I'm looking forward to watching all that. Forty Towers, one of the quintessential British comedies. I've had this one a long time. It's one of the first British comedies I ever owned. Um, what's the first box I ever owned, actually, here? Might be something like the IT crowd, which we'll get onto in a later part. But anyway, at 40 Towers, this is probably the best version you can get. It's, this is all um, sticking out and all very nicely done. It's the complete remastered collection. Mine's missing the booklet because I've got it second hand. But this has a bonus disc and both series remastered. So I think it is the ultimate because the one release after that is just not as good. It's that BBC Comedy Classics one, which is just all beige. The British Empire Series 1. This was £1.50. I watched the first half of it, found it very funny, and then forgot to watch the second half. Very recent edition, the British, em British Empire Series 2. It's funny, this costs less. And this is a really nice sort of box set um, version, even though it's only got, well, it's got the two discs, but it's a single sleeve thing. Really nice. Um, if I do find the first series like that, I'd be tempted to buy it. And I, I have seen others like this at the British Empire. Really nice. Uh, now we'll move on to the next shelf. Uh, well, 
this is where I've started to start doubling up. There are DVDs behind these, uh, but we'll get through these first. So, this is Red Dwarf. So, we have Red Dwarf Series 1. Probably the um, one I enjoyed the least out of the original two. Um, I'll explain why the first two are sort of classed on their own. Um, just because, I don't know, I just think some episodes don't work. Uh, stuff like where you, that you find out how that cat people have been living forever on the ship, and I just don't find it funny. Uh, then we move on to Series 2, which is a much, a vast improvement. Series 2, I've watched it all on VHS as well, I love it that much, I think it is. The only one I don't really like is... Uh, Queeg. I thought I was going to say Dweeb, but I thought that's not the right, the right word. Queeg. Everything else I quite enjoy. Uh, then we move on to Series 3, this is where... Uh, Doug Nealer and... Granite and... Uh, Grant... I can't remember, what's his second name? Anyway, the two sort of main writers and main people of Red Dwarf got a lot more control, so the sets are improved, the writing's a lot better, they're not restricted by anything, because they have a hit. And, yeah, it's a lot funnier season. And Crichton's in it for the first time. Well, technically the first time. If you care, you'll know. Uh, Red Dwarf 4. This one has some great episodes. It has my favourite episode ever, Meltdown. Um, just because there's something about seeing Rimmer, Control, Gandhi, is it, who else has Father Christmas, Marilyn Monroe and a smattering of others against Hitler and all this, but it has my favourite Red Dwarf scene ever of Winnie the Pooh getting hanged and if you're intrigued by that then you'll probably enjoy all the Red Dwarf Red Dwarf 5 uh, I watched, I recently marathoned this one I think it was this year, possibly very late last year and I think Back to Reality and uh, Quarantine are classic episodes but the rest I just think are a bit hit and miss uh, they're still good, but I just don't think they are the best. Series 6. A lot of people's favourite series for Goodman and the Apocalypse, and rightly so, it is a brilliant episode. However, I think this, as a season, isn't amazing. I think Rimmer World and Goodman and the Apocalypse are probably the standouts. Out of time, I find just a bit too confusing. Um, Legion's okay. Sirens I, th Sirens, I think, is a really weak episode. Uh, but it's still good. You know, don't get me wrong, there's not a bad Red Wolf episode except for a few on Series 1. Apart from that, they're all pretty much stand out brilliant. Um, I, now, Red Dwarf 7 is where people say it loses it, because this is a, a few years after Rimmer leaves. It's like, oh, Rimmer leaves, and do it now, Rimmer, now. oh, just shut up, Kachansky is hilarious in it. And this is one of my favourite Red Dwarf seasons. And I think, you know what, I don't really care that people would say, well, that's stupid, or have you watched this one properly, or you don't get it, and all this sort of stuff, because, no. I've seen them all countless times, and this series just has so many funny episodes on. And I, to be honest, it's, a, it's nice not have Rimmer there, because Rimmer gets boring after a while, because yes, he is a funny character, but he's a bit two-dimensional. He likes, he plays by, he is the rules, and is a coward. And by series six, it's getting a bit tired, in my opinion, especially if you marathon it all. Anyway, series eight. Uh, I don't like this one. <clears throat> this is the worst Red Dwarf series ever. Um, I think that this is universally agreed by fans, and uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that one. Uh, series 9. Now, if you own Series 9, or Back to Earth, you don't recognise this. This is because it was a custom-made sleeve by myself, printed up professionally on a professional printer, because, you know, I wanted it to look nice and fit in, and I'm quite happy with it. I think it looks really nice. Anyway, Series 9, it's only three episodes, and the kind of one mini-film. And, yeah, I like Back to Earth a lot. It's one of those concepts which Red Dwarf is good at. Messes with your head, but in a nice way. And is, isn't is and anyone could really get their head around it. Red Dwarf 10. Stellar series. Considering this is, what, 20 something years after the first series. It's, it's a bit brilliant. It's up there for me with Series 7, 3, and 4. Uh, series 11. Watched this one the once. I thought it was okay. I thought it, there were some funny moments. And then, obviously, I would have Series 12, but I don't own that yet. But I'll just say I liked it. Uh, anyway, let's move on now to Python. So, with the complete Flying Circus. Flying Circus is a very, 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 very funny television show. And is the first sort of alternate comedy show ever. Uh, series 1 and 2 are the best. Series 4 hasn't got John Cleese in because he just wasn't interested in doing another one. Which is fair enough. And there's only six episodes, and they're okay. They're not the best Python episodes ever. Uh, but I think John Cleese put it, there was three that he thought were very good, and there were three that he thought were okay. And I think that's probably the best way to put it. There are three pretty good episodes in it, and then the three that are just still right. Then we have the complete Python films. 
Uh, so this is, and now for something completely different, a man with three buttocks, no. Well, yeah, and no. Uh, Holy Grail, Life of Brian, The Meaning of Life. I haven't watched The Meaning of Life yet, which I know is a sin, but it's weird, like, I just, I don't, I don't really have the uh, urge to. Um, I, I've seen all the f clips, I've seen Mr. Caruso and all that other stuff. Still have the urge to, I, I think I'm going to probably do another Python marathon and probably when I get to Meaning of Life actually watch it. Uh, the Truth Almost a Lawyer's Cut, which is the six hour documentary for the 40th anniversary of Monty Python, and it's brilliant. It's a brilliant documentary, it's split into six parts. Um, and yeah, it's this was the first Python thing I properly watched, which is weird to start with the documentary. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really interesting thing. And I'm sure lots of the nuggets of information I've only ever heard on this documentary. But yeah, if you've not seen it, you can pick it up for relatively cheap. I think this costs about a quid in CX. Yeah, it was very interesting, very, very cool documentary. Uh, it's got some really cool people that I've interviewed in it well, like Russell Russell Brand, uh, the person who works with Ricky Gervais on The Office, and uh, extras and that, whose name escapes me. And Stephen Merchant, there we go. Uh, who else did I interview? Uh, Steve Coogan, Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. Um, thingy from Pink Floyd, can't remember his name. You know stuff like that. Really, really uh, cool uh, people that you get interviewed. Blackadder, the ultimate edition. This is the ultimate edition um, because this is pretty much what if you had the BBC box set of comedy classics. This is everything you have, but the case and it's presented in a lot better way. You don't get Blackadder is my favourite British comedy ever. You don't get better than this. It's better than In Us, which for someone of my generation is a bold statement, but it is. Uh, it's better than Red Dwarf. It's better than Python. Better than Dad's Army, but although they aren't the same thing, so it's a bit of an unfair comparison. But it is. And speaking of Dad's Army, here is the complete series. I'm also going to have to end this part very quickly. Uh, but we'll try and get to the end of this. So Dad's Army. I like it all. I've watched pretty much all of it now. I think... I there's bits I think I've, I've missed, but I'm I've, I'm in a marathon of it as well. Marathon a lot of things at once, comedy wise. It's just when I feel like putting it on, I'm in a place. And yeah, Dad's Army is it's hilarious. One of those comedies that actually makes me laugh out loud, which is very rare. The uh, movie by Columbia Pictures, which is just alright, and then the new film, which I haven't actually watched yet, uh, but I've heard good things about it and the cast as well. I like, um, so hopefully I should enjoy that film. And then we have a really recent edition, Bottom, the complete series one to three. I love Rick Mail. Uh, I've never heard of uh, the other one, Ed, Ed, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, but I'm, my dad said it's very funny and I'll, I'll enjoy it. So, you know, I'll take his word for it. Anyway, uh, but it's a good place to leave it now because I have to move all these off anyway. Uh, I just thought I'd quickly say thank you for the amount of views we're getting on these videos. It is mind-blowing that people are interested in my DVD collection. Um, we've got kind of quite far to well, we haven't even started the shelf to be honest. Uh, but yeah, hope you're enjoying the series. This is going to go on for a while. I think my 14 part estimation is going to be roughly right. But you guys appear to be enjoying them because they appear to be getting about 100 views each. Which is and the first one, first part's on 281, which is insane. Uh, so I've, I've got to hand it to you guys. You are amazing. Uh, I love every single one of you, and I wish I could thank you all in person because you are brilliant human beings. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys on the next one, which hopefully Thursday I'm going to go for. Um, anyway, see you then. Bye.